Okay, hello Ruby. Okay. Hi, how are you? Okay. Uh, Ruby, we want to talk to you about the situation in Zambia. Could you give us some information on the solid waste system and what kind of activities happen there, what opportunities you have for businesses, etc. And maybe give some indication what the Dutch uh, companies could do for you. Hi, I'm Ruben Lifuka is my name. I run a company called River and Development Associates. We're environmental management uh, consultants working in the area of solid waste management and general environmental management uh, consultants. We've been working in the uh, solid waste management field for a while now and our assessment of the current situation at the moment is that the systems that were designed 10, 15 years ago a kind of collapse. If you look at the Circuit City Council, with the assistance of the Danish government, they created a system to improve the collection of waste involving private sector participation. But the system is not working on two fronts. Firstly, it's the capacity of the private sector to upscale their own um, engagement in waste management because they don't have the right equipment, they do not have uh, the technical know-how uh, for waste management. In most cases, they're just businessmen who have joined the waste management uh, business. So the, there's failure on that part. But there's also failure on the part of the local authority to plan for waste management, to monitor waste management, but also, most importantly, to run the landfill site, uh, which uh, was constructed a few years ago. And the same scenario is happening around the bigger cities within uh, the country. The private sector involvement has come on board, however, private sector engagement remains pretty low in terms of capacity. When you look at the recycling industry, it is still in its infancy and therefore the waste streams that are mainly attracting private sector involvement, it's waste paper, it's a bit of the plastics and glass. But glass is very, very small and a very small percentage. So when one looks at this scenario, you do have a growing population, you have a huge demand for waste management services, and yet the actors do not have the prerequisite uh, know-how. So going forward, areas of support that are really needed, if one looks at uh, the Dutch businessmen, I think it's partnerships. Partnerships with the local West, uh, uh, private waste companies who would require transfer of technology, transfer of uh, I mean, technology in terms of equipment and the technical know-how of managing waste. But it is also technical assistance to local authorities. Local authorities need a lot of coaching. They need to ad adopt a business approach to waste management, which is lacking at the moment. Um, waste management is approached from a public health perspective only, but waste management needs to be looked at from a business perspective. So the, the Dutch companies would do well to see how they could partner with local authorities. The companies could also work with local authorities in managing critical facilities like the landfill. The landfill has potential for a lot of work, but the landfill at the moment is poorly managed and this needs private sector involvement. Lastly, in terms of recycling, there's a lot of opportunities for recycling. Uh, the recycling industries at the moment are not even getting 10-15% of the recyclables from the waste streams for purposes of recycling. So it's a virgin area, it's one that needs to be exploited, it's one that needs uh, private sector involvement. We don't yet have, for argument's sake, any um, energy from waste plant in Zambia. And yet, with the kind of waste that we're generating, there are opportunities to generate energy uh, from waste. So all those are uh, ripe areas for involvement of the Dutch business community. Oh, thank you. Interesting. One, one question. Um, what can the private companies in Zambia offer Dutch organizations or European organizations who well, want to come and work in Zambia? Well, there, there, there are two things, two, two, on two fronts. The, the new investment uh, regulations in Zambia are calling for citizen empowerment or citizen participation in major investments. So naturally, if uh, Dutch companies would want to invest in Zambia, the investment uh, regulations will require that they partner with the local people. So to have private waste collectors already in the business 
it gives them that slight advantage of working with them, knowing the uh, local landscape and being able to provide uh, local support. That's number one. Number two, private waste companies are given uh, areas to operate in, waste management districts on a zonal monopoly uh, level. So you do get a private company servicing for I mean, say between 5,000 to 6,000 households, and that private company has zonal monopoly. However, in their contracts with the local authority, they are not prohibited from partnering with another uh, private entity in order to increase on their economies of scale, but also improve on their service delivery. So all those are opportunities which the private companies in Zambia can offer to Dutch companies coming in uh, to invest in Zambia. Uh, I'm uh, Marwan Rizkalla, I'm from Lebanon. I'm a consultant in the environmental field uh, for the past 14 years. I have done a lot of work in solid waste management. Uh, I supported many municipalities, ministries in the Middle East region. And I work as a regional expert in the environmental field. Um, there is a great interest for me in solid waste management. Uh, it is an important sector uh, that can affect the economy, that can affect the environment and uh, it should be properly managed, solid waste should be properly managed. And if you wanted something from a European company? Yeah, we, w we would always need um, um, to see good, good practices, good examples, uh, we, we would always need uh, to see a good models of waste management practices. However, not everything that we can see in Europe or, or elsewhere can be the perfect uh, solution for Lebanon. We have to be careful. Through our experience, we have noted that the type of waste, the way waste is collected, the way waste is managed, is different from country to country and even from city to city. So that's why we would always need um, European experience, international experience, uh, good cases, uh, successful cases, to take to take from it uh, what would be good to apply in Lebanon. Okay, and any specific technologies or uh, kinds of information that you are looking for, or anything you don't want. Um, we don't want someone to tell us that this this is what needs to be done without discussing it <laughs> and this happens many times okay uh, in Lebanon uh, there are quite good uh, expertise in the field for the past 15 years at least we have done a lot of sorting and landfilling and composting we know what is successful what is not successful the problem now in Lebanon is that we cannot find a good location for landfilling, sanitary landfilling. This is creating a big social issue and it has created a big social concern at, na nation, at the nation level. So that's why we are targeting now waste to energy uh, techniques, uh, incineration with possible energy recovery, on anaerobic digestion with possible energy recovery. These are the fields that we are interested in now in Lebanon. Uh, this is what the government is considering as a main policy. Um, and this is where we would need uh, good expertise. My name is Manfred Crispin Lioto. I'm the managing director of Lioto and the Company Limited which is mainly dealing with solid waste management in Kinondoni Municipal Council. Our main work in solid waste management is to collect waste from house to house and transport it up to the authorized disposal site. We are collecting about 60 to 90 tons a day of solid waste, mixed solid waste. The amount of waste generated per day and the amount of waste collected per day, the difference is so big. We are collecting at about 33% of the generated waste. That means the remaining 
60 something percent is littered in the streets which poses a danger to the health of the people around that 33 percent is what is taken to the disposal site but the recycled products they are taken to different customers different buyers we are not satisfied with whatever we are doing that is because we are we have a problem of equipment we don't have enough equipment we need more trucks but these trucks they are very expensive we can't afford to buy many of them we have a few of them and some of them are very old you need to repair every now and then it was supposed to be to everybody in the city but it's not the case you go to some places they don't get that service even if you have someone to save them there they cannot they cannot they don't pay so the contractor cannot sustain servicing the people in such areas whoever is generating waste is the one who is supposed to pay the service provider according to the bylaw actually the proper term for that it should be crude dumping actually we have one at Pugu Kinyamwezi and uh, actually the management there is very very poor a few days ago when it was seriously raining here we could not get in which is which means all those days no waste was being collected in town because we had no disposal site every truck getting into there you have to pay it's about 2000 shillings per ton they used to have one but it's not working now so yes they, they had one but now it's not working so they are do they are only estimating we have one flat rate such a truck will pay so much such a truck will pay so much so it is it is like everybody has agreed to that way of doing things because i've been living in some of these developed countries yes. i know what wh how should the uh, i mean how should the truck look like for waste collection but with our country with our crude disposal site like the, the one we have yes. that kind of trucks cannot work properly in this country you see so it is only the, the type we have which can do, the can do the tipping without experiencing experiencing serious problems there but if we come with sophisticated machines mm -hmm. like some one company here they have th this type of european type of trucks yes, yes. it is a problem especially during rain season when they want to drive in the truck cannot move when you want to force it in you will break other soft switches whatever yes, yes. at the back so it is a problem but with our trucks you can just hit at the back with the bulldozer oh. and it goes yes. only special areas like market places okay. then you get contract from the municipal council okay. the municipal council will pay you directly but the, the rest it is the household the offices the factories they pay themselves okay. to the service provider, yes, provider. yeah main roads are being paid directly by municipal, municipal council if you get a contract from them okay. well, maybe it is there but not implemented maybe if they have the, that one in their lockers what is your opinion actually from what i see yes. i feel they are not concerned at all with the west right. had it been that they are concerned we could see the changes but we don't see any change, any change. yeah we have so many things for recycling in Dar es Salaam today. Yes. But the hot cake mm -hmm. is waste plastic. Plastic. Yeah. For the time being. Yes. The time being. And uh, scrap. The market. Sorry? Market. The market niches for each type of recyclable material. Okay. Yes. Uh, plastic, we have plenty of customers who are in need of these as raw materials in their factories. The, this can be used here locally and now we have come up to the stage where it can be even be exported to a country like China Vietnam 
and other Asian countries. Actually, I'm told they are making these conduits for electric, uh, electric conduits yes. and the other plastic products, which is at, the, at the end they come back here as import product from there. We have one Chinese company which want to start collecting these films, th those bags you are talking about, but the problem comes with the weight. You see, these things, they are sold by weight, per kilo. But if we have a heap of these plastic bags and you go and weigh it, you get half a kilo. So these scavengers get disappointed. You are collecting a lot, you are, got, you are getting a lot as a peanut. So we are now in a, uh, planning to discuss with these Chinese to find a way to improve the price to motivate the people to collect more. Plastic bags... There is a Chinese company which have started doing that. But now the problem is the price. You see, if the price is low, people, they, they, they tend not to collect it. But the rest of the hard plastics, that from mineral water, if you have plastic chairs, plastic containers, all of these, they are needed. And the price sometimes is very good sometimes goes down. Okay, so yeah. the market is unreliable? Yeah, the market is... It's there, but the price is... It is the price which you fluctuates up and down, up and down. Okay. After plastic, we have scrap metals. Scrap metal, okay. Yeah. Uh, with the scrap metals, it has gone to the extent that even useful things, people are stealing them and go and yes, sell. Like manhole covers. Yes, manhole covers. Even <laughs> yeah, if you are not aware, your gate also will find it. <laughs> so plastic and the scrap metals, those are the hot cake in town today. The country have banned all the plastic bags, but still you see them in the street. But according to the government, you are, they are not allowed to be used anymore. All kinds, all those who uh, uh, they have categories. Less than, uh, 60 microns. So, uh, something like that. Yeah, exactly. But uh, you see them in the streets. In the streets. Even yes. now, if you go to buy something there, okay. you, you, they will pack it into the that kind of plastic bag. Okay. So, is there a lot of litter and pollution from plastic? A lot. Actually, 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 it's a headache. It's a headache. It's a headache with that. If you go around the street, you won't see the yes. petty bottles in the street because uh, as soon as you throw, there is someone to pick. Okay. Uh, that okay. will pick and sell. Okay. From what I know, a company like Coca-Cola, mm. uh, they are very, very careful with the environment. So whatever they are doing, they think of how to protect environment. Okay. So Coca-Cola, it can't be a problem. Uh, mimi naitu Mary Gilbert Shayo. Na shugulika na mambo ya recycling na, ka, na kampuni yangu ya naitu Grasesha. Mimi ni manager msaidizi. Mkurugenzi wa hii kampuni ya naitu Grace Gilbert Shayo. My na name is Mary Gilbert Shayo, mengi, assistant director Udongo, of Grasesha Karatasi. Company. And the director is Grace Shayo. I have been dealing with many recycling activities, especially with the paper since 1994. I collected and buried the paper and sold it to Moshi Kibo Paper Company. Now we don't get frequent orders. We use the paper to make paper briquettes by hand and sell. We make paper mache, mix it with the charcoal dust and, and small pieces, and using a piece of cloth, squeeze out water and get these round briquettes which are sun dried for four days, ready for use, which reduce use of firewood and charcoal. Indeed, briquettes are not so bad. I also deal with making of clay cooking stoves by using clay and reject aluminum sheets. We use clay to mold the stove containers, which are perforated and sun dried for three days, 
then 330 in a locally made kiln. We then enclose clay molded containers in a ready-made aluminium containers and that completes the process. We use these paper trimmings as packaging material and we pack the stove like this to avoid breaking during transportation to our customers, mostly in Imbea. Customers also come direct here. The demand is very high. The manager will tell you the stove making process. The waste situation is really bad. Waste is not adequately collected. Waste is not a priority. Even contractors in waste have no capacity. The dump site is poor. The paper we collect is sufficient for our needs. We collect according to orders we get. We collect up to three tons per day. Use it in recycling, but sell mostly to Kibo industry in Moshi. In 1990s, the demand for brown paper was high in Moshi. We took around 50 tons of paper per week, but now orders are very unreliable. Tank Pack Factory in Daslam buys only white paper, so almost all papers, all papers is taken to dump site. We get paper free of charge from industries, and we collect most, most when we get orders. Technologies received are many. We are innovative and reject bad ones, sometimes after trying them. Now we deal with paper and use reject aluminium for making stoves. Recycling is informal and involves mostly plastics and scrap metals. Recycling companies are formal, but those who sell the recyclable materials are informal. Most waste is not recycled. Plastic bags are still scattered all over. Unfortunately, we are not aware of any policy. Our challenges are mostly low capital. Otherwise, we do have a pressing machine for paper briquettes and the appropriate kin that uses natural gas for treating the clay containers. We need the capital, soft loans and soft loans. You need to support us to go to India for a learning tour in 2002. What we saved was used to top up our capital. We are now employing 15 youth and we are able to meet education costs for our children. With expertise, good collaboration, we can work together to improve livelihoods. We need machines, we need technology, uh, for example, transport, capital, long duration soft loans, and we would like very much to recycle up to final products like tissue paper, serviettes, toilet paper, and also the technology for making more quality stoves in good time. With the expertise, recycling will, will indeed improve. My name is uh, Sidi Mohamed Jara. I am from Mauritania. Uh, Mauritania, which is uh, in the north of Africa. Uh, I am a mayor of Rosso, which is in south of Mauritania, but also I am a member of Mauritanian Parliament. So uh, I'm here to talk about Western, our experience or my or my experience of on managing solid waste uh, Mauritania have a catastrophic system of managing uh, waste uh, in uh, in my city, which is Oroso, is a city of 53, something like 53,000 people, we barely collect the waste. People are very clean. Yeah, because we are a 100% Muslim country. And uh, we are clean home. 
our homes are clean. But usually, we, because we don't have a, col a collect system, so usually we throw it anywhere. But even in the capital, which is Nwakshot, the government, ah, the government pay, the government pays uh, international uh, or company, which is Pizzorno, to do, to collect, in fact, to collect the waste. But we're paying something like 7 million a year, 7 million euro a year, 7 million euro a year, just for collecting the waste and incinerating the waste, nothing else. And still, the city is not clean. Not even close to 50% clean. I think we need something more efficient. We need like people to come to invest, to have some treatment unity to collect to and uh, how to, maybe for recycling yeah but we need we need communication first we need people with experience to communicate to communicate with us to exchange or to give to show us a successful experience that we could or we can follow. Uh, my name is uh, Vladimir Mariev. Uh, I am a uh, director of the International Center for Best Environmental Technologies. It's the sub-regional secretariat uh, for uh, IPLA, International Partnership for Local Authorities. And uh, for uh, seven years I work as a, a United Nations Industrial Development Organization consultant. And uh, from 2010 I'm a project coordinator of the UNIDA project in Russia. Uh, and uh, the main aim of this project is uh, to create a system for uh, collecting, uh, recycling, uh, one tires and uh, electronic uh, waste in Russia. And of course, uh, in my activity, I uh, work in very uh, close contact uh, with uh, um, some governors, uh, with uh, majors of uh, different cities, and uh, um, uh, I work with the uh, State Parliament, uh, uh, State Duma, uh, with the uh, Ministry of Environment and uh, uh, Natural Resources of Russian Federation, and uh, in my uh, previous years I was uh, a Deputy Minister of the Ecology of the one of the Republic, republics of uh, Russian Federation is the Republic of Tatarstan. So, uh, during uh, 15 years, I am involved in the um, business uh, uh, for uh, one tires uh, uh, management. Uh, and uh, uh, what is uh, the main situation uh, in the uh, Russian Federation with uh, waste management and with wastes? Um, uh, really, it's uh, uh, a very big problem. Uh, waste management, uh, not, not waste management, waste, main, wa waste management, uh, if it's very good organized, it's not a problem. The problem is that uh, more than 95% of uh, municipal solid waste are situated in the landfills. It's the problem. Uh, I think that uh, as for industrial weights, uh, uh, the situation is uh, maybe better, maybe better, but the amount of industrial waste is uh, huge. Uh, every year in uh, the Russian Federation, more than 3.5 billion tons of uh, industrial and municipal solid waste uh, must be uh, 
recycled, must be collected and recycled. Um, but as I told you, the percentage of the recycled uh, waste is uh, very low. Why the situation is so bad? The situation is so bad uh, uh, because, uh, first, uh, first uh, uh, there is no uh, real, uh, uh, there, there was not a uh, real political will uh, uh, for uh, creating uh, a waste management system in Russia. We have uh, large uh, territories where we could uh, organize uh, uh, the official and uh, unofficial uh, landfills and uh, that is why of course the municipalities, uh, the uh, chiefs of cities, majors of the cities, uh, they uh, do not make the recycling uh, facilities, uh, they uh, only uh, put their uh, garbage, put their municipal solid waste uh, to their uh, landfills. Uh, Second, uh, of course, uh, it's uh, cheaper in Russia, according to the uh, regulation, uh, environmental regulation. It's cheaper in Russia to uh, put the garbage to the landfills than to uh, create their recycling facilities and uh, to recycle uh, their waste. Uh, then we have now the industry uh, for uh, recycling waste. But I must tell you that uh, before 1987, the situation in uh, uh, the Soviet Union, that time it was Soviet Union, it was uh, very good with waste management. It was really waste management, and the waste management in the Soviet Union began in 1920s. And uh, we have uh, real industry, we have real system, uh, it was a state system uh, for uh, collecting and uh, recycling waste. And the problem is that uh, after 1990s, of, co of course, uh, we've got uh, the problems with uh, the, uh, cl um, w w with their uh, waste. Uh, but uh, now, by now, the situation is changing because after 2010, um, there are some orders of uh, president of Russia and uh, some uh, orders of the uh, chief of the government, prime minister of Russia. And uh, these uh, um, uh, orders are connected with their uh, waste uh, management, with the environmental situation in Russia. And we hope that now, in uh, 2013, uh, the expanded producers' responsibility in Russia will be adopted in the new environmental law. And. Uh, in this case, the situation is really changing, and we see how it is changing. For example, as for Moscow region, uh, as for Moscow, first of all, the city of Moscow, and then Moscow region, uh, there are about uh, 25 million people working in the Moscow agglomeration. And as for Moscow city, last year it was divided uh, uh, into seven, um, uh, seven parts, and uh, it was a competition organized by our, our city government and uh, according to the results of these competitions uh, seven companies seven uh, private companies uh, became the winners and uh, they are now uh, responsible for collecting and uh, disposal of waste in North Moscow and they have long-term uh, long-term contracts with Moscow uh, government and uh, this uh, period is uh, 15 years and during 15 years they must not only dispose uh, their uh, garbage uh, from Moscow they must uh, build the facilities for recycling they must build their uh, facilities uh, for uh, producing something from uh, uh, different kinds of uh, secondary raw materials and uh, what will be now very important for us for example from uh, Western companies it will be very important uh, to look uh, to, to, to find the solutions how to uh, first of all how to collect 
in the ecologically uh, safe man manner uh, the waste in the cities, how to transport it in ecologically waste manner, uh, waste manner. how to uh, recycle it, what to do, what is better the, uh, to get biogas, uh, to get uh, to, 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 to get biogas, to recycle it, uh, to uh, make their uh, separation. Uh, uh, or, or, or something else, and of, of course we uh, think about the incineration, but incineration also in the ecological manner, because uh, as for me, I'm an expert of the United Nations organization, and uh, I must tell you that uh, I saw and I heard about a lot of proposals from Western countries who say, well, we can uh, supply to you uh, the uh, factory for incinerating waste. We ask them. Uh, it's a modern equipment. They say, no, it worked in our countries, but now you can, um, free of charge, uh, take it in your country. We say, no, thank you, because uh, we don't know what are the outputs from such a factory. That is why, that is why now we in the Chamber of Trade and the Industry in the uh, of Russian Federation, uh, we uh, made the experts uh, committee who now uh, is... Um, making the expertise uh, for offers uh, which come from different uh, countries, which come from uh, different private companies to understand what is really best available technology and, and uh, what was the best environmental practice. It's very important, it's very important for us uh, really to get the technologies, the equipment which really possess us to uh, reach the zero waste. That's I think the task, and I'm sure that the collaboration with Western companies could be very fruitful for us and for you too. Thank you. Mamadou Lamine Danyuko, I'm Malian and co-manager of the company Abyssal Bureautique. I'm 39 years old and I'm married, I have two beautiful children. I'm a university graduate and I majored in electronics and computer maintenance. ABC Limited is a Malian engineering and implementation company which premiered on August 26, 2003. ABC's mission is to get involved in all stages of the process of implementation and operation of computer systems. Indeed, since its inception, the company has adapted to changes on the market and remains competitive and very efficient in its areas of intervention, which are installation of computer networks and communication of business systems, computer training, sale, rental of computer equipment, recycling, and computer maintenance. Due to the constant technological innovations, electronic equipment ages fairly quickly. As a result, a large number of electrical and electronic equipment end up in household waste, causing severe environmental damage. ABC is aware of the need to combat this problem and the prospect of diversifying its business activities in an environmental quality approach. Hence the desire to develop a true national recovery sorting and upgrading the waste electric and electronic equipment sector in Mali. We are witnessing in Mali an important flow of incoming hardware from large countries such as the United States, France, Japan and China, just to name a few. It is out of complete ignorance that these worn out yet recyclable materials are arranged widely in the environment, rivers and waterways. The lack of internal policy about ecological sustainable management of the waste, electric and electronic equipment gives way to some important environmental and health risk when we know indeed that these devices do contain very toxic elements such as copper, mercury, barium, glasses, etc. In all Malian cities, administration is responsible for managing both solid and liquid waste with no selective sorting and waste equipment that are sometimes burned. There is no specific legislation either regarding the management of electrical and electronic waste, nor is there any policy of prevention against the proliferation of electronic and computer waste. Currently, the recovery and recycling of waste, electric and electronic equipment are performed by informal sector actors who often lack the required technical training but who recover materials worth still some market value. Compared with the recovery of waste equipment, there are several alternatives. For example, Convenience stores use good parts, uh, use parts in good condition to repair other defective equipment. Some recyclers are doing the door-to-door -door approach, asking for unserviceable equipment that will then be sold to customers after dismantling then removal of the parts that are still of interest to them, getting rid of the rest in public trash cans. 
The informal sector activities are conducted in anarchy without any consideration for human safety and or the environment. There is therefore an urgent need to improve the local operating conditions and to professionalize this activity in order to increase the recovery rate in strict compliance with the environmental standards. We are then seeking a partnership with Dutch and European companies in order to a implement a modern and flexible infrastructure equipped with technologies of sustainable development to strengthen our capacity of recovery of waste equipment and strongly reduce the risk of environmental damage in the district of Bamako to begin with and in a second phase replicate this example in other Malian cities b reroute toxic elements produced as a result of the dismantling of non-recyclable items in Mali plastic hulls, LCD displays, circuits, printed materials, batteries, chargers, etc. to Holland and other European countries for better support in more specialized treatment units in compliance with the Bail Convention. And finally, C. Training and experience sharing in effective and ecological management of waste equipment. Thank you for your attention. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Richard Mbaya. I'm uh, from South Africa, but originally I'm a Congolese. I'm working at university. Uh, is a Trani University of Technology in Pretoria, and I've been working more than 12 years. And my area of uh, work is in mineral processing. Now we are dealing with waste, but especially waste of mineral from the mine. The mine is producing some waste, uh, like tailing, because there is some uh, ma uh, mineral they cannot process with uh, what we've got like uh, techniques. That's why we as a university, we are trying to look for some processes, how to extract. But by doing that, we are producing also waste. But that waste, we are trying how we can dispose that waste. That's our problem. And you are also helping the government, municipality in the West. How we can deal with waste. But South Africa has got a good organization in the West and very advanced. The problem is we are also trying to reach the zero waste like in Boras. We've got collaboration between South Africa and uh, university, uh, my university, Twenty University of Technology and the uh, University of Boras. And you are dealing uh, I'm, I'm a leader in South Africa, but there is a prof, Ken Bolton, in, uh, in Sweden, who is in charge. And you are trying to work together through organization. In South Africa, we have got a national uh, research foundation, which is helping the student how to go, how to do, how to find out uh, how we can deal with the research. And in Boras, there is SIDA, that organization, and you are working in 50-50 percent. And if you wanted some form of cooperation with some Dutch businesses, or what would you want? Yeah, we want something like that. If we, uh, we want some collaboration, but in the uh, West, it can be interested in West management. We would like you to get experience from uh, Dutch uh, countries because they are also advanced in the West. And we will be happy if we can collaborate with uh, those countries. Okay. 
My name is Jean Paul Brice Afana. I'm a citizen of Cameroon in Central Africa. I live in Yaoundé and I work with an organization called Vital Action for Sustainable Development. It's a youth NGO which is engaging young people, children and young professionals in education, environmental issues and also waste management in our country. I'm also working with the Commonwealth Youth Climate Change Network in engaging young people from the Commonwealth in climate change issues. Uh, what I want to highlight here is that uh, there's a big problem in many developing countries regarding how to manage our waste, which is not easy in general. And having citizen participation in supporting local government and local authorities is something that we need to promote and encourage. And also the public-private partnership is another aspect that is usable and that could be helping us to achieve very good impacts and results with uh, citizen contribution. Uh, however, there are still a lot of challenges that we face and one of them is how could we encourage citizens to realize that if we want to manage well our waste, they have a role to play. Another challenge is how could we ensure that the international cooperation and support provided to our local governments is adaptable with what we have as local realities. And this is very big as issue because most of the time we receive support or we receive technology that doesn't fit with what we are doing at the local level or so, some type of support that citizens are not able to understand or to get appropriate with. And it's not also easy for government sometimes to really tell to industries or international partners this is what we want because most of the government they don't consult with citizens before establishing partnership and this is where the lack is very visible in the case of Cameroon. Because if the government, the local government are able to bring citizens together, people, and then consult with them to get to know what they are expecting or what they would like to see as results in waste management at the local level, then they can better translate it to international cooperation and international partners. And in the case of Cameroon, what is very uh, important for us to achieve and to bring in is how could we create wealth out of our waste. And there are some groups that are working on that, but they still lack the technology and the technical experience and expertise on that. And I think international cooperation and international partners are able to bring this support to the local people through local government. And in a very simple way, for example, young people in Cameroon don't always have access to jobs and we see in Cameroon like West could be a good opportunity to create jobs in black and green jobs. And then how could we receive important support and technology assistance to transform this idea into reality so that we can transform the waste management problem as a solution to provide more jobs to young people, for example. And also, uh, it's also important to educate children to understand that uh, recycling is not a concept that is is non understable by people. It's something that is teachable and we can start at home inside families and also during school uh, time. And also we want to see how families could better understand this so that they can train and educate their children on the recycling and waste management aspect and prospect. And then we can bring this into the reality of having citizens that are more empowered and understand more environmental issues. That's the voice from Cameroon. Thank you so much. Thank you. I am Anur Diatlik, Director General of South Asia Cooperative Environment Program. Uh, the organization is based in Colombo, Sri Lanka. And this is an intergovernmental organization established in 1982. There are eight countries in South Asia region, starting from Afghanistan, Bhutan, Nepal, Maldives, Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, and Sri Lanka. Now, this region is about one-fifth of the world population. And also, uh, this region has natural resources, uh, but the population is quite high. Now, uh, if you take the solid waste management, South Asia Cooperative Environment Program, namely SACIP, was involved in the, this activity to coordinate activities within the region and to uh, find solutions which will be applicable to the member countries, member states. But uh, you know, the solid waste management is normally in all the countries, is managed by the local authorities. And since this is, all these countries are developing countries, 
and uh, they all have financial constraints and uh, they all practice 3R system, reduce, reuse, recycling, but uh, most of the cases, uh, the, the dump, dumping of waste in all of the place, natural resources, waste for uh, what you call this uh, wetlands or river systems. So it has been a problem uh, with many solutions coming from various countries because uh, one of the reasons is mainly our waste, the mainly the region waste, is composed of mainly on what do you call this, uh, the calorie value of the waste is low. And there is uh, what you call uh, high uh, moisture content. So if you are going to convert this into energy to waste, uh, waste to energy, then you have to use additional energy to get it, get energy. So it is, so most of the practices are mainly on recycling. But the issue is, uh, if you are going to practice the recycling methods in the West uh, developed countries, they are not really suitable because of uh, the, the, what you call, the, the composition of the waste, then uh, there are agricultural biomass, everything. So, uh, so we have to have systems or, or mechanisms or so, uh, technologies which will suit our condition because all these countries, uh, most of the countries are humid and uh, normally it, they are apart from Bhutan and uh, uh, top towards Afghanistan, other, other countries are all humid countries. So we are the, the recycling of waste or uh, waste to energy, those pro uh, programs, mechanisms have to be uh, country specific or special suited for the countries. Then the uh, other thing is the local authorities, the people can't afford at the moment to support these things because of their low income. So we have to have low cost, cheap but innovative technologies to satisfy our uh, people in the region. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Claudia Araújo. In this video, I will introduce you Fimbra, an European Brazilian company founded by former executives of Brazilian and multinational companies with large experience on local business. Brazil is a growing market in the world, leading the Latin American region. With almost 200 million inhabitants, Brazil is one of the 10th biggest economies in the world. In this moment, there is a huge opportunity for clean tech companies that want to explore the new markets. Brazil has some environmental issues that need to be solved in order to attend the legislation and the sustainability agenda of the government. The brown agenda is a relevant issue since more than 85% of the population lives in urban areas and state capitals. Only the biggest municipalities have appropriate sanitary landfills these are the cities with larger budgets for waste management. Brazilian solid waste policy was enacted in 2010. It was inspired on the waste directive of the European Union and introduces in Brazil the concept of extended produce responsibility and a waste year. Although the law demands that by 2014 all the open dams should be closed, Many municipalities have not done this due to several bottlenecks. Two instruments to help municipalities to solve their waste management limitations. Consortium of municipalities and private-public partnerships. Both of them there have been successful experience. Despite the international crisis, the Brazilian economy was not deeply affected. And the regional consumer market is still continuing to grow, mainly due to the stable economy. 
and an upgrade of the population into the new middle class has further strengthened the consumption in Brazil. Exportation of commodities and products are depending on the international market. In order to be more competitive to attend European legislation, the Brazilian companies must improve their environmental performance. This fact is a trigger for local adoption of best available technologies. Life cycle philosophy is becoming a standard in Europe and therefore the European companies will demand a lower environmental impact from its Brazilian suppliers. Finbra is a Finnish Brazilian company that can support you in the Brazilian market. Finbra was born with the purpose to make the path for European companies easier into Brazil and to establish themselves. Initially we worked mainly with Scandinavian companies due to my own background and contacts but today we are open to work with all European companies that have plans to enter the Brazilian market especially companies within the cleantech area. As a European I've seen the challenges a company or a person can have when entering Brazil due to the language, working culture, bureaucracy, complex taxation among many other things. Despite the challenges in Brazil, there is a great potential for new business. With the help of the right trustable people, you can enter the market faster, more comfortably and avoid costly mistakes. Finbra can act as a gateway for your business and the local Brazilian market, offering guidance and knowledge in context with understanding the various nuances of working in the Brazilian market and will thereby help companies overcome the various initial challenges when entering the market. Finbra's approach is very flexible and tailored to your needs. Start. Soy Sandra Milena Pinzón, directora ejecutiva del colectivo Ciudadano Bogotá Basura Cero. Somos una organización que lleva seis años promoviendo las políticas públicas hacia Basura Cero en Colombia y en específico en Bogotá. Dentro de nuestros logros está el haber incluido en el Plan de Desarrollo Distrital de Bogotá, la ciudad más grande de nuestro país, un programa específico hacia Basura Cero. Ha sido todo un trabajo bastante arduo. Al comienzo empezamos con campañas muy sociales, desde eh, metal el hombro al escombro o incluso eh, desembolsate, repilo con las pilas, que tuvieron algunos logros en la regulación interna de mi país. Des a partir de ahí comenzamos a, a, co a conocer un poco más el objetivo Basura Cero como meta global, como meta mundial. Hace aproximadamente desde el año 2010 que, se, que ya el IPLA comenzó a trabajar en Colombia, nosotros fuimos la primera organización civil en hacer parte del IPLA y hemos sido muy juiciosos en estudiar las propuestas que ellos han hecho a nivel mundial. Hemos procurado participar en los eventos que organiza esta organización multilateral, eh, como quiera que es necesario el intercambio de conocimiento y mostrar en nuestro país hacia dónde avanza el mundo en economías circulares, alianzas público-privadas y por supuesto una regulación. 
¿Qué sucede en Colombia? Colombia tiene una ley de servicios públicos de 1994 y desafortunadamente no tenemos una ley de residuos, una ley específica para el sector, no tratada solamente desde un, del sector del servicio público como tal, sino hablar de la gestión integral. ¿Qué promovemos nosotros? De un lado, que no puede existir ningún residuo que vaya a relleno sanitario sin previo tratamiento de aprovechamiento. Ese es uno de nuestros pilares. El segundo, la democratización en relación con las discusiones de residuos. Nosotros hemos fortalecido muchísimo la parte de educación hacia la gestión de residuos. En la primaria y secundaria pues nos hablan tradicionalmente en, en mi país de biología, de matemáticas, de física, de química, pero hacer una reflexión desde todos los sectores, sin importar lo, las edades, sin importar eh, incluso eh, el, eh, la situación socioeconómica, hemos hecho una serie de eventos para, para romper esa brecha entre el conocimiento y la sociedad en general. Es por eso que hacemos todos los años encuentros internacionales, foros nacionales y como consideramos que uno de los vehículos eh, más importantes para difundir este mensaje es la cultura, también hacemos el Festival Internacional Basura Cero que realizamos cada año, cada vez con más fuerza, con participación de bandas no solamente de Colombia sino actualmente de Latinoamérica como Paraguay y México que estuvieron el año pasado y donde nosotros hemos convertido esto prácticamente en un movimiento latinoamericano Zero Waste, Basura Cero, a través de esta expresión cultural que lo que busca es generar conciencia. Entonces, de un lado, eh, generar toda una serie de políticas que permitan avanzar en la infraestructura, la inclusión y fortalecimiento de, de sectores privados que tradicionalmente han hecho aprovechamiento en mi país y tercero, la educación y la difusión de este mensaje para generar conciencia ciudadana hacia el aprovechamiento, el reciclaje, el reuso, la reutilización y poder avanzar en unas políticas basura cero para transformar lo que las problemáticas de los residuos, dejar de pensar en que la basura es un problema, sino resignificarlo hacia un concepto diferente de otras economías, de economías circulares a partir de los residuos. ¿Y la cooperación internacional? Bueno, nosotros en cuanto a la cooperación internacional, eh, trabajamos con algunas organizaciones como la Asociación Colombiana de Ingeniería Sanitaria Ambiental, que ha hecho paneles específicos eh, para traer nuevas tecnologías, ellos tienen también sus congresos, este año el congreso va a ser con Alemania, nosotros vamos a hacer en julio Expo Residuos, cuyo país invitado es Holanda y consideramos que en qué podemos trabajar de la mano, podemos trabajar en intercambio de conocimiento, intercambio de experiencias, el conocer el camino que otros han recorrido reduce los tiempos y los costos en Latinoamérica. Pero también somos muy claros en que no, no queremos incineración a gran escala en nuestro país, porque de un, lado, de un lado nuestro país desafortunadamente no es muy fuerte en normatividad ambiental, entonces, mientras no existan unas garantías que nos permitan tener este tipo de tecnologías, en una primera instancia no estaríamos dispuestos a trabajar esta, esta, este tipo de tecnologías. Sin embargo, si sí creemos en, otras, en otros procesos que, que hemos venido trabajando a partir de la investigación, como por ejemplo la gestión integral de residuos de demolición y construcción RCD, eh, como por ejemplo la pirólisis eh, o inclusive el compostaje a gran escala que observo en Holanda, y Suecia y Alemania donde he tenido la oportunidad de estar, pero siempre con, con un componente de mucho compromiso ambiental. Nosotros no queremos promover nada que implique un riesgo para nuestro territorio y para nuestro ambiente. Y tercero, el tema de financiación es importante, pero entonces debemos re revisar eh, si es una cooperación que implique realmente un avance para la ciudad y para el país. Entonces en eso nosotros somos muy rectos, muy verticales y en especial esperamos poder hacer esos intercambios de, de conocimiento, abrir la discusión 
de manera abierta, conocer experiencias exitosas y poder avanzar en ese sentido.